Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Another day of playoff football awaits. Should be a pretty interesting collection of games. Hope you guys have some fun with it, even though we're obviously not part of it. But we still got some stuff to talk about. And yesterday, I made the video where I said that based off the evidence that we have, it's basically guaranteed that Pete and John and etc, etc, etc are coming back for 2022. If we were going to move on from, from Pete Carroll, we should have announced it by now. Probably should have announced it several days ago. If we were going to do anything big in the front office, should have been announced by now in all likelihood. So we have to move forward in that reality. The reality that Pete Carroll is getting at least one more year. And I may not like that, but I am fully capable and fully willing to move forward with that knowledge. So let's pivot to the area that the team could still make some major changes on the field with the players. Because like I said, if you're not going to fire Pete and you want to make major changes to this team, the only thing you could really do is trade Russell Wilson. And be ready for the rumors to come flying this offseason, by the way. I, I don't think I need to tell you guys that. Last year, the rumors were flying. This year, it should only be worse. I mean, the Seahawks were actually bad this year. Russell Wilson didn't have nearly as good of a season in 2021 that he did in 2020. There's more reason than ever to believe that something could happen. So be ready. Be ready for the rumors to fly. Don't believe everything you hear, but don't believe nothing that you hear. Uh, you're you're going to hear a lot of fake trade proposals, a lot of fake rumors, a lot of um, I have anonymous sources that say this and that, and you're going to have to learn to sift through the crap and find the actually good stories. So as for whether or not any of it might happen, I'm honestly getting the sense that it probably won't. Uh, I, I mean, you are hearing about the rumors and the ideas, like like I, on the screen here I have this uh, trade proposal from Colin Cowherd, Russ goes to the Giants, Giants send us a billion draft picks or something. You're going to see a lot of stories like this going forward, but my honest take is that we're not going to trade Wilson. And as somebody who has advocated for trading Wilson after this season... I'm going to go ahead and go on record here at the start of the offseason and tell you what I think now that we know that Pete's coming back. So if the Seahawks are really going to bring back Pete Carroll for 2022, then I think we should bring back Russell Wilson as well. And obviously there's caveats to that, right? Like if a team like the Giants comes along and says, hey, we'll give you our next 8 billion first round picks for Russell Wilson, then... Of course, I would take that. <laughs> Hyperbole, of course. But if they came along and made some ridiculous offer, like four or five first-round picks, I'd do that instantly, of course. If somebody were willing to overpay like that for Wilson, then uh, my I would have to uh, adjust course a little bit. If you could get four or five first-round picks, you take it instantly. You don't think too hard about it for a 34-year-old, well, about-to-be 34-year-old quarterback. If Russell Wilson were to request a trade, then get him out of here immediately. I, I do not need a quarterback who doesn't want to be here held hostage. If he requests a trade, then okay, that's different. If he wants out, let him out. But unless one of those two things were to happen, and there are a couple other things as well, like what if Deshaun Watson suddenly got declared of all charges, and then you could trade Wilson and get Watson? Of course I would do that. Right? Like, Watson's, what, eight, nine years younger than Wilson? I forget. He's definitely younger. Maybe it's more like seven years, but whatever. Watson's really, really good, and he's young, and that that's a slam dunk. Sure, I would do that. But barring anything like that happening, if Pete is staying, then I think Russ should stay too. And there are basically three reasons why I feel that way. It's not because I'm 100% confident Wilson's going to play like a top three quarterback next year. It's not because I have supreme confidence that he's going to be um, able to completely embrace this new offense and excel in it. It's not because I think that he's going to become an all-pro quarterback again. I think that's possible. I think that's certainly possible. 
I think that if you gave him more support in the form of the offensive line and maybe the running game as well, he probably would play like a quarterback should when he's making the kind of money that he does. That's certainly possible. I don't have all the confidence in the world on it. I don't. But there are three much more compelling reasons to me why you should keep Wilson in town. And while keeping him around, you hope that maybe the good side of variance shows up with him next year, where he does flow well within this offense, where you do see a return to the all-pro form, where you do see better results under what will hopefully be a better offensive line, where a second year in this new offense is going to help him a lot, pro almost certainly a lot. So that's all valid. That's all true. Uh, I am interested to see what he would do in a second year in this offense. I am interested to see what he would do under a actually top 10 offensive line, but it's not even really that. So first of all, after really thinking about it, after really digesting the fact that Carroll's going to be here in 2022, it occurred to me, I don't trust Carroll to use those draft picks well. If you trade Russell Wilson, you, you might send him to the Giants to get their two first round picks in this upcoming draft. I think they're both top 10. Maybe they're like top 12. If you get those two picks, I don't really have any confidence that Carroll's going to use them well. He's just blown too many draft picks. Rashad Penny, LJ Collier, Malik McDowell. Over and over again, we blow our top end draft picks and then we hit on some of the later ones. So me, to me, giving Pete Carroll a bunch of early, early draft capital, high value draft capital, I, I just don't trust him. I, I, I would expect him to go into the draft and find a way to take some pick that nobody saw coming, that nobody thought was valued there. And I, even if he does take the right player, I don't totally trust him to develop that player unless he's a cornerback, I guess. <laughs> he, he can develop a cornerback. I don't know about him his ability to develop just about anything else. But uh, bottom line is, I don't trust Carroll to turn around with the draft capital from a Wilson trade and produce anything strong with it. Um, the, the second reason is kind of related to that, but I also don't trust him to really want to get young prospects that can excel for the next decade plus when we know that Carroll's not going to be here for another 10 years. Like to me, if you trade Russell Wilson and you get a bunch of draft picks, a bunch of high value draft capital for him, and then you turn around and you try to use it in the draft, you're really trying to get a collection of players who are going to be really, really good for the next decade plus. And there's going to be some degree of difficulty in developing them. It's going to take time. They're probably not going to be dominant as rookies, maybe not even as a second year player. There is a process there. And I don't totally trust Pete Carroll to be down with that process because he's so old. Honestly, Big part of me, if we trade Russell Wilson and get really good draft picks for him, I would expect Carroll to turn around, trade those picks for veterans that he likes. Try to find guys who he thinks can help him win right now. Because I, I, I don't think it's a good idea to count on Pete Carroll to build that 10-year-plus team, that long-term contender, when we all know he's not going to be here long-term. He's already the oldest coach in the league. Maybe he'll be here another four years tops, I think. But... I don't see him having a whole lot of interest in trying to develop a long-term contender. I see him trying to hit the trade market with those picks for people who he thinks can help him now. That's what happened with Jamal Adams. I would expect another Jamal Adams trade. So that's reason number two. I don't trust him with that. Number three, and most importantly, I think, I don't want Russell... I'm sorry. I don't want Pete Carroll to have any excuses in 2022 for a bad season. If you let... Pete Carroll trade Russell Wilson, then you kind of have to accept that things are not going to be great for a little while. You're probably going to have another bad season in 2022. And I would have been okay with that under a new regime. I would have been okay with that under a brand new uh, coach, brand new GM. I would have been okay with that because you got to give them some time to build. But what I don't want is Wilson to go somewhere else, Carroll to stay, and then we have another six or seven win season in 2022 and Pete just gets to go, hey, you got to give me some time here. Because yeah, actually, that would actually be fair. It would be fair to say that if you're going to trade your franchise quarterback for draft picks, 
one way or the other, you got to accept that it might take some time to find the next quarterback. It might take some time to develop some of the young players you get in that hypothetical Russell Wilson trade. You, you got to give him a couple years, and honestly, it might not be until 2024 when you can realistically expect Pete Carroll to have built a true contender in Seattle post-Wilson. And I don't want him to have that excuse. If you bring back Russell Wilson in 2022, and if he r plays most of the games and the team is bad again, this fan base is going to revolt. They're already starting to. The Card uh, remember the home game against the Cardinals a couple months ago? Team, the fans booed the team the whole game. And they deserved it, but the fan base had absolutely no qualms about just going, you know what, this is a crap product, this is a crap effort in a game trying to save your season. You deserve the booze. You saw all those empty seats at some of the last few home games. People just deciding, nah, this isn't worth my time. That's off one losing year. You put together another losing year without something to hide behind, and you can't run from it. You will not be able to run from it. I truly believe that if Pete Carroll brings back Russell Wilson for 2022 and we're bad again, they're not going to be able to keep Pete. They're not. They're going to lose so many ticket sales. They're going to lose so many season ticket holders. They're going to be, they're just going to be forced to get rid of them. I, I truly do believe that. Maybe that's just me being too optimistic. I don't know. But that's what I want. I want to put Pete in a situation where he has to win now or get the hell out. I don't want to give him those two years of leash while he tries to build a team out of whatever he gets out of the Wilson trade. So to me, that's the most important reason why I want to bring Wilson back for another year. At the end of the day, if he does, if you do bring back Wilson, then the expectation in 2022 needs to be Super Bowl or at close. And I want that. So I, I, I know it's kind of weird that I'm sitting here advocating for the blue pill because I've spoken very poorly about the blue pill in the past. But I think it is better than the black pill at the end of the day. At the end of the day, I just can't get myself to say the black pill's better than the blue pill. You trade Russell Wilson, you don't know where these draft picks are going to go to. Under a different GM, I would trust that they would go towards reasonable places. I would trust that you would actually take BPA, trust that you would actually go with the conventional wisdom. But all accounts are that Pete Carroll is still our de facto GM. There's no reason to believe he's lost his personnel power. If I thought that Pete Carroll had lost his personnel power, maybe I would reconsider. And if we do want to make a surprise Pete Carroll firing in the next few months, then my perspective would change. I would say, okay, I, my preference is to trade Wilson. But if Carroll stays, I think this is for the best. And I'm kind of biting my tongue saying that, admittedly, because... My confidence in Wilson being able to get back to all pro form is, I don't know if it's low, but it's not high. And I have advocated for a Wilson trade several times in the last several months. But after really thinking about it, I just don't want to give Pete uh, an excuse. Pete gets a perfect excuse if Wilson is traded this offseason, period. So... That's really all I got for this video. Let me know what you guys think down below. I just want to go ahead and put this statement out there before the offseason actually starts. If the right offer comes along, if Wilson wants out, then okay. Then you got to do it. If one of those two things happens, you got to suck it up and do it. And I'm not ruling it out. Teams are willing to overpay for what they hope is a franchise QB all the time. Um... It's very possible Wilson requests a trade. I mean, he, he he didn't request it last year, but he came a little bit close when he released that list. And he did release that list. Some of you people think that that was fake news. It was not. But barring something like that, I think Wilson should come back. And hopefully he gets a little more support. He's a little more familiar in this offense. And he can get back to top form. That's definitely possible. And then we might be happy that we didn't uh, we didn't move on from him. But to me, the key is the real key to this all working is that we just need to do things differently this off season. And I'll talk more about that in the future. 
but you got to change your priorities on how you're addressing this team. That's what it's going to take for this to work, and I'm not super optimistic about that, but that's a talk for another time. All right, I'm out of here. Peace out, Go Hawks. Let me know what you think down below. That's where I land going into this offseason.